Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 1 on 1 and today we are looking at the battle of champions. In the blue corner we have a render done in Cinema 4D plus a CDM's expert course coming at a subscription of $112 for Cinema 4D and a separate subscription of $55 per month for a CDM expert course. And in the orange corner, we have a similar render from Blender at a subscription of $0 per month without any add-ons or any additional software. So let's see how Blender compares in this battle of champion render. So the task is to render something similar like this uh, in a reasonable time frame without doing a lot of hacks. So modeling the bottle is pretty easy. Let's start by looking at how we can make the water go around the bottle. Add a plane, go to edit mode and merge the points at the center. Move this to the left from the pivot point. Go to the modifiers and add a screw modifier. Increase the screw, increase the iteration. Let's do two, scale it up, center this. Go into edit mode and move that vertex. It will increase, enlarge the curve we want. We right click, convert to curve. Right click again, set spline type, bezier. Change the handle type to lined. We don't need all these control points, so let's decimate this. Right click, decimate curve, and just reduce the points. That's the path our water is going to take. Let's create an emitter that is going to be emitting the water and I want it at the bottom here. We just add it there, just align it to that. Let's create a domain, shift A, cube, and just enclose the whole thing into a domain. Go to the physics tab, fluids, domain, liquid, and select our emitter, fluid, flow, inflow, uh, liquid. Initial velocity, normal direction, to like that. Go to frame one. Hit play, nothing is happening. Try increasing the resolution to 64. If that doesn't work, change the flow type to is planner and now things are working. We're going to remove the gravity, so select the domain, scroll down, field weights, remove the gravity, and we have something like that. It's still not following the curve, so let's work on that. Select the curve, go to the physics, force fields, keep it at force, change the shape to a curve. Curve force is working, but it's pushing it away from the curve. So we need a negative force to attract the particles. So let's do a negative five, hit play, and we get fluids. The water is overshooting the curve. So just increase the flow to something like 0.5. Increase the strength to negative five so that it pulls the particles a little bit further. Add a camera, remove the border collisions on the domain so that the fluid can go up. And let me extend this so that the fluid can just disappear at the top. If you want the fluid to collide with this object, you can give it a, a fluid type, effector. Get the domain, turn on mesh, and now we get something like that. We need more detail, so let's do 128. Change the catcher type to modular or all, and then bake. I only bake 100 frames. So you would end up with something like this, a fluid that follows the curve. Let's look at the materials. Our first thing I'm going to do is set up some lighting, go to the world, make it dark. We have some rotating lights here, giving us these reflections, and uh, you can see we even see the color changing there. So let's first get that. I'm going to add a mesh, a plane like this, and uh, go to geometry nodes to create an array of area lights that rotate around this. Create a new geometry nodes, add a curve circle, Preview that, add an area light, just like that. Go back to this and import the light. Make sure you set it as an instance. Use the curve to points node, then instance on points, and then use our light as our instance. Bring this up here. We can expose the curve radius to change how large our light is going to be. Plug the rotation from the curve points to the rotation as the rotation of instances. If we go to top mode, we see you can see how this looks. Then you can add a vector math, change the rotation of these. So just change the Z value so that these are all pointing in. Use negative 1.57, which is 90 degrees for radians, so that these are pointing directly towards the curve. I can select the original light and give it a value of 100. Make sure this is the output so we can see everything now. You can also expose the count so you can control how many lights you have. Change the radius, expose this, this value here, the rotation, negative 1.57. You can also expose the Y value of the lights. Add a background, get it up, add another light just for the background. You can add some rim lights to have highlights on the edges of the bottle, turn on denoising, and we have something like that. You can change the color of the lights just a bit. 
Now let's create a material with some color separation. First thing you do, delete the principal, add a glass shader. In Blender, all colors can be made out of hue and saturation values or hex values or RGB values. If you have values set to one, 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 you get white. We can separate these colors so that we have the glass refract different colors at different index of refractions. We can separate these shaders into three so that we have a red, a green, and a blue. If we add them together using an add shader and add this to this, we go back to the original shader. Now what we can do is refract these colors at separate index of refractions. So I can do this at 1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3. That looks like too much separation. So let's try 1.2, 1.3, and 1.5, 1, 1.45. Another thing you will notice, this fluid has a pinkish tint to it. So to add that, all we need to do is add another shader and use a mix shader this time to mix in another color. So maybe a pinkish color like that. So that's how I did that. I just increased the resolution, make this less refractive and change the color. I think it's somewhere like that. And you can see my setup. If you want the rotating lights, you can either animate the rotation or just animate it using geometry nodes. So you select the lights, just separate the rotation component and add a scene time with the seconds plugged into the Z component. So this just gives you the rotation, but if you're using the seconds on the timeline, which changes, that will give you the rotation of the lights as you want them. And that will also add rotating reflections to your scene. Okay, so that's it. If you want the project files, links are going to be in the description. But also let me know in the comments who is the winner in this battle of the champions, the Blender render or the Cinema 4D and X Particles render. Again, project files are going to be in the description on my Patreon page, Gumroad, and my YouTube membership page.